the witness. So you personally let his signature go on those documents while knowing the CDS had open allegations against him? To be clear, Madam Chair, sorry, there's a yes or no is cool. Well, <laughs> I just want to remind you uh, what we did and didn't know at that time. Uh, I, you've made that statement several times. I just want to know, uh, you personally let him make his signature on that at-risk pay approval without him knowing, and you knew he didn't know. That was your decision not to uh, tell him before he signed? I want to remind you about what we did and didn't know at the time, which is we didn't know anything about this complaint. We didn't know the substance, the nature, or the details of the complaint. But the Prime Minister was never told of any serious allegation about General Vance. So who made that decision? I want to remind you that while I took the information extremely seriously, that the minister, through his office, brought to my office, and that we then um, passed to the Privy Council office, who took carriage of it, um, we actually didn't know the seriousness or the nature of well, the, the prime complaint. minister was well, deliberating on the succession plan for the CDS and, and was not told of the allegations against him. Who made that decision? The performance management program is actually quite expansive and consults quite a number of people. Um, it's a program that's in place for all senior officials across the public service, including deputy ministers and associates. Okay, so we, we know that, uh, Madam Telford, thank you. Mm -hmm. But while considering approving a pay raise for General Vance, the prime minister was never told of serious allegations against him. Who made the decision not to tell the prime minister? Madam Chair, through you, I would just remind us of what we knew, which was we didn't know anything about the allegation at the time. You knew there the was an allegation. Point of order. Madam Chair. Point of order. Point of order. Madam, Chair. Madam, point of order. Madam Gallant, please allow the witness to finish her what he's, she's saying first. Just and a yes then or no next, is what your we next. Know. What we, well, Madam we Gallant. Point of order, Madam Chair. Point of uh, order. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Baker. Madame Gallant, like her colleague previously, is not allowing the witness to answer questions. Ms. Telford has information, I believe, is attempting to answer the question. I would like to hear the answer. I think the folks at home would like to hear the answer. And so I would ask that you ask Madame Gallant to allow the, Madame, Ms. Telford to finish her answers before asking her next question. Uh, Ms. Telford, if you'd like to finish your answer, please. I just think it's two things. It's important to remember that there wasn't an allegation in terms of any content around an allegation to speak of. Um, there was a complaint that the ombudsperson raised with Minister Sajan that he uh, was not able to do anything with and that we were not able to do anything with. The Privy Council Office wasn't able to do anything with. And it's the Privy Council Office who puts together the performance management program okay, thank um, and executes you. So it was on the that Privy Council Office who decided the then uh, not to let the Prime Minister know. Oh, it, it, because my only question is, who made that decision? So the answer is the name of a person. Now, the answer is that there wasn't an allegation in terms of something or for which there was um, that we didn't know the nature of the allegation you do, or you know the there content. Were, madam, the point of order, madam Chair. Point of order. 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 Madame Gallant. Please. Madam Chair, point of order. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Spengeman. Madam Chair, there's an additional consideration to the point that was raised repeatedly by my colleague, Mr. Baker, which is that it's impossible for interpretation to follow when a member is talking over top of a witness. 